today what we're going to do is replace the, the brake fluid reservoir on a 1999 Discovery 2. Now the Land Rovers, they like to leak and they like to leak a, a lot. Now the problem you'll have is you'll see the paint is flaked away right here showing signs of leakage. The first indication you'll probably get if you don't check your brake master cylinder, you'll see it leaking down here on the brake master cylinder, is you'll get the red brake light on your dash. And I got that, but the vehicle was working fine, and I went and noticed my brake fluid was low. Now what you have are two rubber grommets, which will show down here, and those rubber grommets start to fail. In my case, for whatever reason, they fail when they're cold, and I lose a considerable amount of fluid in the winter. Now it's springtime, and I've wiped it off, and for about the past two months, I haven't had anything leaking, and I've maintained a good seal in here. But I've got a spare anyway, and now's a good time to swap that out. So the first thing we're going to do is we've got to get rid of the excess brake fluid. So to get this cap off, you twist it to the left, and then pull straight up. No, I spun yep. it to the left. Right? Right. <laughs> right. Then, there's a little orange filter, which we'll pull out. Should get a new one on this. Look out. Set that off. Make sure you set it on a rag. Brake fluid is very corrosive. And then use a turkey baster, or I've got this little pump here, suction pump. Get that in there and start to drain it out. And we have a container. I like to use extra, keep your washer fluid containers around. They're really good oil containers. Now the 99 Discovery 2 is equipped with two zone anti-lock brake system and the purpose of the two zone is any one zone gets a leak you will have reduced braking but it won't fail your entire brake. You can see the zone by this little dam right there and this back section is almost full of fluid. This side up here is actually empty so make sure when you're, cipher, when you're sucking out the fluid that you get in that back zone and okay. suck out that stuff. Okay, now I wasn't able to get everything out and you're going to get a little bit of this to leak when you pull it off. So it's a good idea to take an old t-shirt and some shop towels and pack in around there. Okay, that's good. Let's figure this pin out. Okay, this is the new reservoir and what we're going to show is how to get this clip off. You can see this clip goes all the way down the length and these two ports are on the top of the master cylinder and it snapped into that groove right there. Now the way to get it out is you can see there's a key here but you've got these hoses in the way as well as the um, wiring to the anti-lock brake module. So the trick is to get a small screwdriver. I got a small flathead here and you're going to stick it into this keyway and then push it down. But to push it, to get it out now, you've got to reach in, but you can't get your hand in there. So I've got a longer screwdriver, and I'm going to reach on this side right here, the side closest to me, and I'm going to pry it back, and it will gently slide right out. We're going to show you now on the real thing. Okay. I'm going to put it in here. You're going to press down. This is extended. It's going to be pushed in farther, but I'm not going to do it on the new one. So you're going to push in, push down. I'm going to leave this one here to show you. While pushing down on this, I take this screwdriver, stick it through that hole, and I get leverage here, and I can pull it out. See how that moves? And then it will slide out, remove this one, and then pull it out with your hands. The best way I've found is to feed in between here. It's your little one. Get it in that keyway. 
if you have the flat end of the screwdriver up, not this way, but this way, you'll come to a stop, and that's where you know where to press down. Press down, stick it in the metal tab right here, pry it against here, and pop. It will slide, maybe work it to the other side if you need to, and pop. It'll pull, pull it out, right pull out. out pull it. The clip gone, we should be able just to gently wiggle it and pop it out. And then, make sure you get that rag underneath the master cylinder. You can see the dirty oil right here. It's good that we didn't get the oil all the way out. Hopefully, you don't want to get air sucked back in here or you have to use the computer to bleed the system. So if we can keep the oil here, we should just be able to do a typical bleed to get the old brake fluid out rather than get a test book and pay the money for the computer system to do a module bleed. Okay, now we're gonna get these O-rings out. You got one here and one there. And that, hopefully, is what is causing our leak. We'll gently pry that with the small screwdriver. Come on this side. Now be careful with that fluid in there. You can slosh it with the screwdriver. It's a good idea to have safety glasses so that won't get in your eye. And then remember the way it came out. I didn't, I didn't spin it. This is the top, this is the bottom. We'll go over on the air cleaner and we'll compare it to the new one. Okay, here's the old one next to the new one right here. And you can see where the old one is having a problem. This seal right across that axis is worn away. This one's bulging out. I don't know if you'll be able to see it very good on the camera, but if you look good, that new one's bulging out this one is smashed in. And it actually, a lot of these I have heard are cracked. Mine's not cracked, which probably explains why mine leaked in the winter and was good the rest of the year. Okay, first thing, just fingered. I'm gonna set that over the top, make sure it's square. Then I'm gonna press down on my thumb and work it in. It's a grommet, so it should Go right in, you'll hear it squishing, and you'll see now that I have a good seal all the way around. And we're done. Push it in, make sure it's flat. You'll see an equal, let's get the screwdriver, you'll see an equal seal distance around here. It might feel like it's in, but one of these ridges on either side could be high. It doesn't take a lot of force, just work it with your thumb gently. This is how the grommets sit on the master cylinder. This one's farthest to the front of the car, this one's to the back. Notice that they're different. This one has a port that comes out here. If I turn it around, it's flat on the bottom. It's not a pure pass-through. And so this one's gonna be a little bit different to get out. I'm gonna work it, try to break it from the front, and then pry it out that way with my fingers. Don't forget your safety glasses, because this stuff can flick as you work that. Just work it around. Push up. And get in with this one with needle nose pliers. Pinch on the end, pull out, be careful. You can break it. how it looks when it comes out. Be sure to pinch hard with the pliers and pull out. You don't, notice this one was falling apart. You don't want to get any back in. We're gonna look in there. Any rubber. Clean out the stuff, the junk. This tube right here, which goes into the, what's it, what would that be? The brake drum or vacuum boost? The vacuum boost. And the vacuum boost, that tube, is where you're going to push the next grommet on. Make sure the hole goes around that and seats nicely. That. This is the hole that you're going to need to put on that tube. Make sure it goes in this way and seats nicely. Again, we're going to use our fingers. Okay, 
there you go, and it will snap down in. Push your finger all the way down evenly to make sure it's sealed good. And we have new seal for our reservoir. On the left-hand drive Discovery 2, the drain pipe is going to be facing the outside of the vehicle. This groove right here where we put our screwdriver to pop out is toward the front. That's how you know you have it lined up. Okay, the pin, when it gets installed, is going to slide under those tabs. The spring force is going to hold it up. This is going to go on it. You can see the two holes where that slides in. This is going to be on the upside. And it's going to slide in, get it just... Oh, we can't. You're going to slide it to where the needle, just before it gets into that first grommet, so right there. The trick is to push down hard on the front side, get it started, and then using a lot of weight, push on the back side, and I was able to get this screwdriver and feed it in between the wires and push on the pin to get it to lock. And then once it's in, you'll know, because it will not come out. And slide that locking pin across and into the cap. And you miss it. Push that right across until it snaps. And I missed again. Okay. The key is to push down on the front side and using your fingers you can feel when it gets under the grommet. And push it on the back side, slide it forward. Gee, that's it though. Try to go straight down there. There you go. I'll push down in the back. Tell him you're pushing down in the back. Push down in the back now once you feel it get past the front. Use our flying screwdriver. Pushing in the back, and I'm going to push forward with the screwdriver. There you go, pop it in. Okay, get yourself a clean funnel and a new thing of DOT4 sure. brake fluid. Um, DOT4 is the specification. If you use three, I have heard it will eat your seals away and it may be the reason you have a problem and are watching this video right now. Before we put it in, we wiped out, clean the funnel, and then install the new filter. And that just sets in there. Put the funnel on top and you're good to pour. Now you're only going, the max line is right here, the minimum line is right here, it's good to try to get it just basically where the seam is, and then we're gonna bleed the brakes. Shine it with the backlight, you can see I'm just below the minimum. I know I'm going to need more because I'm bleeding, so I'm going to add more. You can see I'm right at the seam. Okay. Gently take out the cap. Be careful of those two wires. I'm going to take a clean rag and clean off the sensor. Just some of the old brake fluid that's got on there. Might need to move your rags out of the way to get that up. Set that there. Now, you don't want to put a lot of pressure on these wires, so you just set it on the top and feel it, and it'll pop down. And then you cam lock it, twisting it, push down. 
then cam lock it, twisting it toward the passenger seat. And now you're sealed.